Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying an algebraic expression. We have 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z equals 0. And we're going to evaluate x plus y plus z all over the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So let's go ahead and see how we can do this in two different ways. First method. So I'm going to go ahead and work with the first expression first. Let's make a common denominator. Notice that x, y, z all have to be different from 0. And that is also going to give us a non-zero denominator here, right? Because x squared plus y squared plus z squared can only be 0. Of course, x, y, z are real in this case if they're all zeros. So if you make a common denominator, we're going to get yz plus xz plus xy all divided by xyz equals 0. Now when is a fraction equivalent to 0? Obviously you're not allowed to divide by 0 so the denominator should be non-zero and we know that's not going to happen. I mean they can't be 0 and the numerator is supposed to be 0. So 0 divided by non-zero. This means xy plus xz plus yz equals 0. I just changed the order to kind of follow the usual way to write these things, like kind of alphabetical order, sort of. So what do we get from here? What are we supposed to find? We're supposed to evaluate this expression. And I'm thinking maybe we can go ahead and take the numerator and square it. And let's we'll see what happens. Because this expression actually comes up in the square of x plus y plus z. So if we square x plus y plus z, then we get x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2 times the quantity xy plus xz plus yz. Now, this part is important. We do know that xy plus xz plus yz is equal to 0 from 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z equals 0. So this is supposed to equal 0, which means 2 times 0 is 0, and this gives us the following, x plus y plus z squared equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now what does that mean in terms of the expression we're trying to evaluate? Take a look. We have x plus y plus z, so that means we need to square root both sides. But when you square root a square, you get two solutions. In other words, the square root of z squared, or I should probably use a different variable like t maybe, t squared is the absolute value of t, which means it's equal to t if t is positive and negative t if t is negative. What happens if t is zero, then it means this is gonna be zero. So we could kind of include that with one of these. So this gives us two things, and we can kind of use, instead of the square root, I mean the absolute value, we could use plus minus sign. In other words, x plus y plus z is going to equal plus minus the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Make sense? Now notice that the square root of a sum, which is real, is always greater than or equal to zero, right? But since x, y, z all have to be different from 0, this is always going to be positive. With the plus minus sign, it's either positive or negative. Make sense? So, let's see how this works. Divide both sides by the square root of this expression. And then you're going to get what you're looking for. And that is going to equal plus minus 1. So the answer we've been looking for is plus minus 1. Make sense? What does that mean though? Well, depending on the values of x, y, z, the answer can be 1 or negative 1. So that's pretty much the first method. We worked it algebraically until we got the answer. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative approach, which I think is cool, but here's the problem. If this is a multiple choice test, you can definitely apply it. But if you have to show your work on any test or exam, then this is probably not going to work well. But anyways, it's going to give you an idea at least about the answer. 
So we have 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z equals 0. And we're supposed to evaluate x plus y plus z divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. We notice that the expression doesn't really depend on x, y, z. In other words, it's a constant. Of course, there are two possible values, and we can kind of discuss if both of them are going to work. But I think the second method will clarify that. So since this value is a constant, we can make up some values. Why not use certain values for x, y, z so that this first equation is satisfied? And see if we always get the same answer. Obviously, we can do it more than once. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and pick x equals 1, y equals 1. And of course, that implies that z is equal to negative 1 half. Obviously, I can make up values for x, y, z at the same time because they are dependent. So let's go ahead and plug these in. x is 1, y is 1, z is negative 1 half. And at the bottom, I'm going to have the sum of squares, which is 1 plus 1 plus 1 fourth. Now, this is going to become 2 minus 1 half, which is 3 halves. And this is going to be 2 plus 1 fourth, which is 9 fourths. Its square root is 3 halves. And guess what? This is going to become positive 1. Well, with the first method, we got two answers. So is one of them invalid? Like, could the answer be negative 1? Let's go ahead and check it out. First of all, think about this. If, if the bottom, the denominator, is always positive, to get a negative answer, x plus y plus z needs to be negative. So can we pick values such that this sum is negative? And the answer is yes. For example, if you pick negative 1 for x and negative 1 for y, then automatically you're going to get positive 1 half for z, and their sum is going to be negative. So the sum doesn't have to be positive all the time. Let's go ahead and find out what happens with these values. So we're going to plug it in, right? Negative 1 minus 1 plus 1 half divided by the square root of 1 plus 1 plus 1 fourth. The denominator is not going to change. The numerator, though, is going to be negative 2 plus 1 half, which is going to be the opposite of this, which is negative 3 halves. And the denominator is always 3 halves, which means the answer is going to be negative 1. So it looks like both answers are possible depending on which values you pick for x, y, and z. So there are two possible solutions for this expression, and those are positive one and negative one. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.